someone and assume that we know their heart simply because we know a few broad characteristics about their generation as a whole. Yet it can be helpful to know a few characteristics and unique challenges for this particular generation, Gen Z. So the next question we look at is what are their unique characteristics? Now there's a plethora of information out there about Gen Z. There are plenty of stereotypes and plenty of studies being done attempting to understand the things which this particular generation has in common. And I'll try to sum it up this way. They are digital natives immersed in digital technology. As such, they are going to have a shorter attention span and ability to form deeper connections online, but also a thirst for face-to-face interaction. They're swimming in a world of memes, deep fakes, and constant change. This helps them to be highly adaptive and fluid, but also creates a feeling of groundlessness. This is why many studies show them to be the most anxious generation, but they are also more aware of mental health than any previous generation. This generation is also the most diverse and inclusive of any generation. As an example, about six in 10 Gen Zers 59% say forms of online profiles should include additional gender options. They are also passionate about things like social justice and climate change and will often use digital tools to turn their passions into opportunities for others. They also have an incredible entrepreneurial spirit. They are inclined to explore freelancing, side gigs, and creative ventures, often leveraging digital tools to turn their passions into, as we said, opportunities. They also can be incredibly pragmatic. Having grown up in a time of economic insecurity and technological disruption, they tend to prefer that which will give them stability, and they are pragmatic in their approach to education and careers. Now, this moves us on to the next question. What are their unique challenges? There are some unique challenges which this generation faces and some of which we, have, we haven't even experienced the full impact of. What will be the result of a generation that grew up with their parents having faces buried in a cell phone? How will a generation be impacted when a global pandemic halted the actual entire world during its formative years? There are also unique challenges to the gospel. However, it's helpful to remember that regeneration is impossible with any generation. Each generation has its own set of barriers, barriers, I'm sorry, and the spirit is able to overcome each of those. But there are a few specific challenges that might present themselves with Generation Z. Their digital noise and a short attention span make it difficult to even gain attention. Next, being constantly bombarded with information makes it difficult to show the exclusivity of Christ. Next, there is a good chance they have little to zero church background, okay? Next, if they do not, if they do have a perception of the church, it's most likely, unfortunately, negative. Um, Prevalent um, secularism and materialism make questions of the afterlife seem foolish to them. So, an even bigger question, how should we change how we share the gospel with Gen Z, which which is what brought us to this particular particular article, right? If we consider the characteristics as well as the hurdles of this generation, we can begin to think through ways in which we might be able to share the gospel message to help our receptors hear the good news in their own language. First, because they likely have very little church background, we cannot assume religious language or even a familiarity with religious concepts. Do you know Jesus died so that you can spend eternity in heaven? 
is good news, but it's not going to be received as good news by Generation Z because they likely don't have a proper framework for these concepts. In an insightful article, uh, Josh Chen mentions three prevalent worldviews and how Jesus provides a solution. He lists them as follows, okay? Number one, guilt and innocence. Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our, for my sin, allowing me access to heaven. Number two, shame and honor. Jesus Christ freed me from my shame and allows me to be who I was created to be. Number three, fear and power. Jesus Christ defeated the principalities of this world, freeing us from demonic oppression. Now, Chen notes that we're moving out of the first worldview and into the second worldview. Generation Z is filled with anxiety and likely some shame. As we move into an honor-shame culture, we'll need to think about how to share the gospel in these terms instead of the guilt-innocence framework that we are more familiar with. All of these are part of the good news. The Bible speaks of each of these frameworks. We do well to learn which conversation we need to have so that the good news is heard as good news. This generation is hungry for good news. They're hungry for a captivating story. They're longing for meaningful connections. So in previous generations, we were almost oversaturated with Bible knowledge. They've heard all the Bible stories and they've had their own church experience. But they're done. They've already done that. Many with Generation Z cannot say that. So there is a curiosity there. The lack of biblical knowledge can actually be a bridge to the gospel. But we must treat the Bible and the good news as the story it is. The most compelling and real story in the history of stories and not like a refrigerator manual. It's not basic instructions before leaving earth. It's the story that explains all other stories. It's what we provide integrity to the fluidity of their world. Now, they are also incredibly inquisitive, but they aren't likely to ask an adult, much less a religious leader. For an answer to their question, they're going to most likely go to search YouTube. Why not face this reality and labor to produce quality, Christian content that answers the questions this generation is asking. We should think about how to effectively share the gospel digitally. Makes sense, right? The next generation. Now, personally, I'm incredibly excited about the gospel proclamation for this generation. Just as with every generation, there are difficulties, but also positives to sharing Jesus. While their lack of Bible knowledge is discouraging in a way, it's also incredibly exciting. It's like starting over again and seeing wonder when they hear some of these stories for the very first time. It's amazing to think about how we can meet broken and hurting people who are overcome with anxiety and overwhelmed about the groundlessness of our world and share with them the hope of Jesus Christ. He is the answer to our our anxiety. The field is ripe for harvest. We will learn how to speak the good news in their language. And most importantly, here's another um, alternate to that particular question. Will we learn how to speak the good news in their language? just listening to Teachable Moments with April Podcast. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode. We invite you to stay connected with us on the other social media platforms of ours, which is TikTok, Pinterest, 
Instagram, Threads, and YouTube. Also, we'd like to invite you to check out our official podcast landing page on podpage.com slash teachable moments with April to see all our content in one place and leave personal messages, feedback, and more.